In this video segment, we're going to talk about how cabinets work in the Home Designer products. When you begin with a new plan, the program will ask you to begin with a template. These templates control the different cabinet configurations and default styles that you use when you begin the plan. Let's go ahead and open this up and let's begin with the Urban Chic Contemporary Template. You'll find the cabinet tool in the menu and there are base, wall, full height, soffits, shelves, partitions, and in the architectural and pro products you'll find custom countertops and a custom backsplash that you can apply in a 3D or elevation view. Let's begin by placing a base, a wall, and a full height cabinet and let's talk about the differences of these different cabinets. I'm going to use the 3D camera view and just point and click in the direction of these cabinets. In the 3D view you'll notice the cabinet properties match the Chic Cottage Contemporary template was selected because it set the colors and the hardware and the toe kick inside of the cabinet defaults. I'm going to show you an easy way to change these cabinets but if you're curious of where these default properties are set you can always open up the default settings and you'll find these properties in the cabinet tool. For example in the general cabinet this is what controls how small your minimum cabinet is and when you resize a cabinet typically when you buy them they're resized in three inch increments you could change that and resize it in one inch increment. The base cabinet here are all the properties set to it and if you take a look at the materials in here this is where the brown of the box is coming from the color of the countertop, the hardware color, all of those things are being set in these properties. You may not need to open up your default cabinet settings but these are where they're set and by choosing the template it will control the color that you can choose for your cabinets. And as I mentioned I'm going to show you an easy way to change the colors in the cabinets in just a second. Let's explore a few of the properties of the cabinet. Let's begin with the base cabinet. As I mentioned, when you resize your cabinet, they bump in 3 inch increments. That can be controlled in your defaults. You can also double click on the cabinet and then you can be very specific about the width of the cabinet. In this case it's 33 inches. If you needed it to be 32 and a half, you could easily type that number in there. To modify cabinets, you can click on the front of the face item of the cabinet. Notice in this case the face item is a drawer. And if I want to add another face item in here, let's say I want three drawers in this cabinet, you can come in here, click Add New, choose the face item type, in this case I'll select the drawer, change the item height, I'll enter in six inches, and then using the move up and move down, you can control where those face items are located on that object. You can also easily change a face item if you wanted to resize this to say maybe 10 inches then you can resize those face items and there are a variety of face items that you can choose from in the cabinet face item drop down panel. Next let's take a look at the wall cabinet. Again when I resize this and let's bump it out to 30 inches notice the door style automatically changed from a single door to a double door Usually that happens after you stretch a cabinet past 24 inches and that's typically the way you're going to buy your cabinets at the cabinet shop. Let's go in and take a look at some of the properties in this wall cabinet. If I click on the face item in this case, notice that it's an auto right door and again that's why it resized to a double door. If you want to force it to be a left door, you could force it to be one large door and that's how you can control that face item right in there by changing it from an auto left to just a left door. Again there are several face item styles you can choose from. You can add and remove face items in the simple dialog right here and then move items up and down. Let's take a look at adding a crown molding to the top of this cabinet. Currently I have no molding on there and to place a crown molding I'm going to click the add new button This is going to open up the library. You can browse down to the molding, find a crown molding, choose the profile that best matches your design. You'll notice the preview of it and using my mouse wheel button I'm going to wheel and scroll in so you can see exactly where that crown molding is coming in. 
Let's do a few things. Let's change the height of that molding to just be an even number of three inches. And you'll notice that there's a vertical offset. If you press a number, a negative number in the dialog, press the tab key here, you'll see a preview of where that molding is going to get applied. There may be cases where you want your molding further down on the cabinet box. In that case, you might want to add a blank area below the or above the door and then you can have your molding lower down on your cabinet box. But use the vertical offset to set your moldings on there and adjust it accordingly. I'm going to open up a very simple plan and let's go through and I'm going to place a couple of cabinets and we'll talk about how they work and how fixtures and appliances interact with your cabinet. Now when you place cabinets in the Home Designer products you can place them in a floor plan view which is what I have open here. You can also place them in a 3D view. Let's begin in the 2D view with a base cabinet. When you select the tool and you come over into the design you'll see a ghost outline before you actually click your left mouse button. They will bump to the wall typically and then if you slide your mouse over towards the corner it will actually then become a corner cabinet at that point if you click it will place the cabinet. Let's take a 3D view and take a look at the same process with a wall cabinet. Using the wall cabinet tool again I get the ghost outline when I slide my mouse over into the corner you'll notice that my outline becomes a corner cabinet. At that point if I left click it will place the cabinet into the corner as a corner cabinet. You can modify these cabinets as we were looking at earlier. Double click on them and you'll notice that there are several cabinet styles you can choose from. In this case I may want to match this cabinet as a pie front cabinet with the cabinet below and change it to a pie front cabinet by removing the diagonal check mark out of the cabinet. Now cabinets are smart in that they bump and merge. So if I slide this cabinet over it will bump and merge and again when I resize them they're going to resize in three inch increments. In placing the base cabinets they're also smart. When you click and place your cabinet they bump and merge the countertops and again if you want to resize these cabinets you can easily resize them. Let's resize this to 21 inches and you'll notice that there is a automatic filler. Automatic fillers are placed anytime your cabinets are within three inches of another cabinet. If I were to slide this cabinet over a little bit you'll see that a gap develops but if I were to slide that close an automatic filler will place in between your cabinets. Go ahead and bump that back over. Let's place one more cabinet that would be used maybe for a sink and let's talk about appliances and fixtures. I'm going to resize this cabinet to be 36 inches in width and I'm going to open up the library. In the library you're going to find appliances and fixtures built in. Some items for cabinets such as a dishwasher will actually replace into the cabinet box and the benefit of that is you get an automatic countertop and it will instantly replace the face items of that cabinet. Some items, if we come down to the fixtures, let's find a sink in here. And I'll grab an undermount sink and click on the cabinet. It will generate a message because I have a set of drawers in there. We'll go ahead and continue and then we'll remove that and make the adjustment. What I'll do is double click on the cabinet and let's change that face item. I'll click on the top face item. I'm going to remove the drawer. In some cases you may want a false drawer which is a face item. And the remaining large drawer that's left here I'm going to change that to just be a door. To change the door or drawer styles for your cabinets let's double click on the sink cabinet that we had you'll find a door and drawer option panel and you can browse out for the door style into the library and you'll see a preview of a number of the doors you can choose. Let's go ahead and select 
just a simple recessed panel. Notice you see it in the preview before you close the dialog and then once you close it, if I toggle on one of my views here, you'll be able to see that a little bit easier where it changes the face item. Let's toggle that rendering back to the standard view. You can also browse into the library and find that same cabinet catalog browse out, find the door style that you want, and I'll zoom out just a little bit, and then you can easily click and apply those onto the cabinets, and that may be a little bit easier or faster way to do it. You can also change the colors and materials for your cabinets. Let's go in and find a color manufacturer here. I downloaded two specific manufacturers from our 3D library. One of them is a Benjamin Moore Paints. If I come down here and choose one of their colors available, we can grab a color and these can be applied either as a stain mode, which you'll notice my icon is a paint roller. and I'm going to stain just this component in here. And you can also apply it if you change that from the stain mode down here in the lower edit. Notice my cursor changes to a spray can. I can paint it as a solid body color. Notice that I'm in a component mode, so it only changed part of the door. And these tools can be changed by the component, object, room, floor, and plan. And those can control exactly what will change. If I change it by plan, it will change all of the cabinets of that color, specifically by clicking on that type of tool. Let's undo that and get back to the brown color. The other manufacturer that I've downloaded was Cambria. Again, from the 3D library, you can find these in your library menu. And to make changes, again, you can select the material. You can choose to paint just the component, which will paint one cabinet or one backsplash item. And then you can control it. The object mode will change it for the entire object. And then the room mode will change it for all of that material in that room. So an easy way to change your colors and materials for your cabinets. You can also make group changes to cabinets by holding your shift key down. In this case, hold my shift key down. I can select both of these wall cabinets. Notice that my crown molding, I did not save that earlier in the video. Click the open button in the lower left hand corner of the menu here. And I'll just come down and add that crown molding back real quickly. And I'll just set the height to be at 3 inches and again set the offset of that to be above the box, a negative 3 inches. And I can use the group command to make similar changes to the cabinets. To learn more about cabinets, make sure you use our support database. You can also double click on a cabinet. The help is available, it's context sensitive, and we'll open up our help system directly into that section and you can learn more about various components of the software and a great way to learn more about your cabinets.